Hello and welcome to Coders Column. My name is Sunny Solanki, and in today's video, I'll be explaining how to create bokeh charts using streaming data. We'll be retrieving Bitcoin prices from a REST API and then create a bokeh line chart using the prices retrieved from this API. First, we will be creating chart in Jupyter Notebook and then we'll explain how you can create an independent bokeh app, independent bokeh web app as well, consisting of this chart. The chart will be updated every second as we retrieve a new data from the REST API. Now the code to create this chart in Jupyter Notebook and the code for the independent web app is same. It is almost 90% same. There will be few minor changes between the two which I will explain in this tutorial. So without further ado, let's get started. As you can see on my screen, I already have a Jupyter Notebook open. And at the beginning of the notebook, I included a sample zip file to show you how our chart will look. And as you can see from the zip file, the chart is getting updated every second as we are retrieving new Bitcoin prices from the REST API. Now, in order to retrieve Bitcoin prices, we are going to reuse this REST API. So let me copy this URL and show you what kind of data this API is returning. So as you can see, it is returning a JSON data which has key name USD and the current Bitcoin price. So if I refresh this uh, API, as you can see, it's uh, returning me new Bitcoin prices every time I hit the REST API. So we will be retrieving data, Bitcoin close pricing from this REST API and update our chart every second with the new prices. So without further ado, let's get started with the coding part. First of all, I have imported Bokeh and printed the current version. So this one is the latest and stable version which we are going to use for our purpose. Then I have imported a few libraries. So requests will be used to retrieve the Bitcoin prices by hitting the REST API. The time library will be used to pause our app or pause our code for one second after we retrieve the price. Uh, the date time will be used to get the current time and this bokeh.io from bokeh.io i have imported output notebook function so the output notebook function is uh, needed in jupyter notebook only uh, it won't be needed in uh, web app so this function let us display bokeh charts in jupyter notebook and as you can see it has loaded a javascript successfully right so we are done with the imports so first of all, what we will do is we will create a data source from which the data will come for our chart. So I have imported a column data source, which is uh, one of the data structure available from Bokeh to maintain the data. And it maintains the data in column like fashion. So it's almost like a pandas data frame. And as you can see, uh, I have provided data as a simple dictionary, which has uh, two keys, close and date time. And the values are empty list. So initially we will start with uh, empty data set and we will keep on appending new prices to this data source, which will be reflected in the chart. So let me execute this line of code. So we have created our data source. Now next what we will do is we will create our chart first and then we will create a logic to update the chart every second. So first of all, let me create a chart. So in order to create a chart, I have imported a figure object or figure function from bokeh.plotting. And then I have also imported show function from bokeh.io. So first of all, I will create a figure object and I will save it to figure. Now over here, I will specify a few values like I need to specify x axis type, which I will set to date time. Then I will specify plot width, which I will set to 900 pixel plot height, which I will set to 450 pixel. And I will set title Bitcoin close prices every second. Bitcoin close prices live every second and let me include a tooltip as well so i will say tooltip is equal to lows will be the label and i will take at the rate lows columns data to be displayed over there so here we have created our figure object 
now next uh, we need to call line method on this figure object in order to create a line chat so in line chat there is a parameter name source which we will set to our data source which we created over here which i will copy and then i will say that for x axis use date time columns data for y axis use the load columns data and then line color i will set to tomato line width let's set it to 3.0 and yeah so here we have created a line chart on our figure object and next i will set the labels for x axis and y axis for x axis i will set label by calling figure dot x axis dot axis label i will set it to date time and then i will set label for y axis which i will set to price in dollar and so we are done with our chart and next we need to display the chart so in order to display the chart we simply need to call show method and pass it the figure object so this will work fine but in our case so we need to update this chart every second as we retrieve new prices so we need to get handle to this chart in jupyter notebook in order to update it so there is a parameter named notebook underscore handle which i need to set to true when i set this parameter to two, true uh, this function will show the chart and it will also return a handle which i will say handle line chart and then we will use this handle later on to update this chart so let me execute this line of code and show you how it looks Oh, sorry there is a minor mistake in a parameter name from my side so it's the uh, x and then y not y axis okay so we have our chart ready as you can see and the chart is empty initially as expected because uh, we don't have any data in our data source so what next we will do is that we will include a code which updates this chart every second so we will hit this rest api every second retrieve the data and push the data to our data source so that this chart gets updated so let's do that so in order to do that i will be writing a infinite for loop as of now so and what this loop will do is that it will hit this rest api every second and retrieve the latest price so first of all i will say request dot get and this is the url of uh, api so it will return a response object and then i will retrieve a json data from that response object so now i have json data and uh, once i have json data i will create a new row object so let me create a new row object and over here i will say close because we are going to update close prices and date time the prologue will be this data of usd as i displayed earlier in usd we have closed prices so i will say his data of usd and then the second is date time which i will set to date time dot now so at whatever time we retrieve the data will be recording date time so this close and date time columns are same as our data source column close and date time and over here as you can see i am creating a new row with just uh, one price because i have one price but in case in your case let's say that you are retrieving five or ten values then you can provide all of them as a list over here and all the five ten prices so uh, will be updated in the chart so now we have new row and now what we need to do is that we need to update our data source with this new row so we simply need to call stream method and we need to pass this new row 
which is this dictionary of new prices so what this stream function will do or stream method on this data source it will add this data to our original data set and as we are going to call this every second the new data will keep on adding every second so now we have added the data to the, our data source so it will update the chart but we have created chart in jupyter notebook and in order to update chart in jupyter notebook we need to call this method push notebook and pass pass it to handle which is the handle we retrieve this one so over here i will copy the handle so what i have done over here is that i retrieved the json from uh, api i created a new row i pushed the data to the data source and then i pushed the changes which are made to the chart to the notebook and now at last i just simply need to call time.slip1 so what i will do i will it this this line will pause our script uh, our code for one second and then it will hit the rest api again and again so let me execute this line of code so as you can see the code is running and new prices are getting updated in our chart as you can see it's hitting the rest api every second and getting the new price and then it's updating the chart with the new prices yeah so i will let it run for a few seconds five ten seconds yeah so it was that simple as you can see to create a chart that gets updated using a live data and we retrieved the live data of bitcoin prices from rest api so this is infinite loop which is currently running now what in order to stop i will simply interrupt the kernel okay so we are done with our jupyter demo so it was a very few line of code as you can see first of all we created a simple chart and then we included a logic which uh, updates the chart every second now you can link uh, this with some widgets if you want which will pause and play this rest api every time we press those buttons okay so let next let let me explain how to create a web app which will show this chart by retrieving streaming data so let me show you the code first of that so as you can see i have opened a visual studio on my editor on my screen and majority of the code over here is the same as our jupyter notebook code with there are few minor changes which i will explain so first of all there are few imports over here which are same as earlier then i have created a data source as usual and the next code is to create a chart which is same as jupyter notebook and then next i have created a function name update chart and over here i have code to hit the rest api retrieve the data and stream the data to data source and as you can see i don't have to call push notebook function over here in this case because this is an independent web app and as you can see i have over here called global data source because uh, we'll be updating data source over here and it's a global variable so that's why we need to put code this way and uh, next what changes are needed for uh, web app is i need to call this function cur doc so cur doc is available from bokeh.io and it's nothing but it refers to the current document or current html page which is the html page of our web app now on that cur doc i'm calling a function name add periodic callback so as the function say this function will be called periodically so i have provided update chat update chat will be called every 1000 milliseconds so every one second it will be called and every one second it will retrieve the data from rest api and add the data to data source so that's the for updating chart and in order to add the chart to our web app i have called a function name add root and to that function i have provided our figure object where our line chart is present so that is the only minor change as you can see these changes was there compared to jupyter notebook so now let's run this web app and see how it looks so i have a so i have a uh, shell open on my screen as you can see and 
in order to run a bokeh app the command is bokeh and then serve and then i need to call show dash dash show so it will open the change in in browser and next i need to give the name of a file which is bokeh streaming data dot file dot py as you can see over here so let me run this line of code okay so as you can see the code ran and the server is started of the web app and this application is started as well which is getting updated with the new uh, prices of bitcoin after hitting it every second so as you can see the app is running at uh, localhost 5006 port and bokeh streaming data yeah so i will let it run for few seconds so this is an independent bokeh app so yeah uh, as you can see the app is running fine and the line chat is getting updated every second as we are retrieving new data from the rest api so it was that simple to work with uh, streaming data uh, with uh, bokeh so as you can see we created a simple bokeh chart simple bokeh line chart which gets updated uh, with uh, new data as we retrieve by hitting the rest api and as you can see our code was around 25 to 30 lines of code only the main logic over here was that uh, to use this uh, stream method so you can create a column data source and remember to use this stream method where you need to pass uh, new data and once you call this stream method and pass new data so data will be updated to data source and as the changes are made to data source with some new data the chart will be updated as well so yeah so it was that simple to work with streaming data uh, with okay so if you have any doubts or any questions then let me know in the comment section if you liked our video then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and yeah see you next time